Welcome to the Inspired by Adventure podcast, bringing you the adventure across the airwaves. All right, welcome to another episode of Inspired by Adventure podcast. I'm your host, Cole Watkins. Today, we have a special treat for you guys. We're going to be learning all about the new Philippines aggressor, and we have with us today my friend, my coworker, Captain Tom Gebhardt. He is the reseller manager here at Aggressor Adventures, and he has just finished a trip on the Philippines and had a great time. So, Tom, how are you doing today? I am doing just uh, fabulous, but uh, I would probably feel a lot better if I was uh, back on the, the yacht over in the Philippines. I bet. I bet. All your photos um, were amazing and the video clips we saw too. So Tom did give us a uh, presentation to the uh, the employees here at Aggressor. And it was so good that I said, hey, I would love to have you on for a little podcast so we can get this out to our folks. Because these little things you're able to hear, you know, for lack of a better term, straight from the horse's mouth about the experience, like exactly what Tom experienced while he was there. There's a lot of stuff that we can't, you know, can't get on a piece of paper that Tom can tell us today. So go ahead, Tom, take it away. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, let me uh, start by sharing my screen um, up and running right here. Do you there see the screen okay? Yes, sir. Yes, Paul. Uh, I'm really excited to tell you all about um, uh, my recent travels over to the Philippines um, and also to all the listeners and viewers because I had a most fantastic trip. Uh, over in the Philippines, on the Philippines aggressor. Uh, it exceeded uh, every expectation I had, both when it comes to the yacht, uh, the crew, the service, uh, the food, everything was absolutely excellent. I can strongly recommend to take a trip over to the Philippines aggressor. And we did something very special. Obviously, we did the Central Visayas. Uh, that's the time of the year we do it right now. And we did uh, an extension because this was a 10-night trip that uh, take us uh, took us all the way up to uh, uh, Gato Island and Malapascua. And especially Malapascua was something very, very special for everybody because that's where we got to see all the, um, uh, the thresher sharks. So without further ado, uh, this is a, an image of uh, one of the areas we were at. Uh, this was uh, on the southern part of an island called Leyte. And as you can see, we had fabulous weather the entire 10 days we were there. Uh, we had some rain showers. There was one evening we had a little bit of uh, wind, but other than that, we woke up every morning uh, with this kind of um, weather and a flat, calm ocean. Sometimes I could not even feel that I was on a yacht. Wow. But before we get to the yacht, we have to get there. And uh, me, based out of Miami, it will take some time to get there. Uh, I basically flew Miami to Los Angeles and then over to Manila, which is a 14-hour flight. And then uh, another local uh, domestic uh, air uh, trip uh, over to Cebu, where the Philippines aggressor is uh, located. So all in all, it took uh, me about 32 hours to get uh, to my destination. And it was fairly straightforward. Uh, what you see there on the right hand side is basically the uh, local airport in Cebu, where everything is prepared for all the arrivals. It's a fairly small airport. But everything is well, you know, well signed, uh, good directions. So there was no, um, uh, um, you know, you couldn't really lose yourself in these airports. And uh, still, uh, over uh, in the Philippines, we do wear masks, whether it's uh, on the airline or uh, in the airports. But once you're outside, you do not have to wear it. And hopefully, this will soon also change to the better. Now, when I first arrived. Um, I stayed two nights in a local hotel, which was a very, very nice hotel. It didn't have many guests because it was some sort of a low season over there. Uh, and the hotel is located, if you look at the uh, center picture, it's located basically straight across this little road from the uh, local airport. Mm -hmm. So once I arrived, I just took a flight of stairs up and crossed the street and I was at the hotel. And uh, I literally had the uh, swimming pool for myself just to get rid of my jet lag, it was kind of nice to get a dip in that beautiful, beautiful pool. Mm -hmm. And obviously the welcome reception is typical for this part of the world. Uh, very, very friendly faces. Um, I'm sure they are behind those masks. Uh, what you see there in the middle is the lobby area. Uh, they had a big, uh, huge restaurant in the hotel. And obviously uh, breakfast is one of the more important meals that you have on the day. And um, 
there is two huge breakfast buffets, uh, one with uh, sort of like local uh, food, and then you have a station in the middle of the restaurant, which is more of a international flavor kind of thing. And uh, on the uh, lower right uh, pictures, you see the uh, hotel room that I had, and it's also fairly inexpensive, very friendly service, very clean. Uh, I can strongly recommend this hotel when you're traveling all the way to the Philippines. Now, where are we in the world? Well, if you look in the left hand side, that's the Philippines. And I said it took about 14 hours to fly there from uh, Los Angeles airport. So you fly into Manila and then there's an hour and a half uh, connection to Cebu. And uh, that is where the boat was located, where we joined them. Uh, they came and picked the crew came and picked us up in the morning, uh, rather in the afternoon, I should say. And it was a 10 minute ride to uh, the uh, yacht in the marina. So it's not very far away from the hotel where I stayed at. And if you look at the route that we did, did, that is exactly the route we did. The only difference was that the first night we're doing a fairly long crossing all the way up towards Malapascua. And uh, everybody was really excited to get in the water there and, and see the treasure sharks. So we decided to uh, stay there for two and a half days because the very first day, uh, we were not so lucky. We saw sort of like silhouettes out in the deep blue water of maybe one or two um, thresher sharks. But then the other day and a half, uh, it was amazing. We had five of them on one dive, not together, but they came passing by. And some of them, they were not further away than maybe, I would say, 20, 30 feet right in front of us. So basically, we just dropped down to about 70 feet. There's a big sandy slope. You lie down there in the sand and you just wait for the thrashers to, to come um, right in front of you. And everybody got some really, really good pictures. Then we continued throughout the week. And one of the more exciting places was uh, an island called Lila, uh, where we got to dive with whale sharks. Uh, there is actually two areas we do that. One area, which is sort of like the wild whale sharks, we basically uh, get a couple of uh, local guys come out with their kayaks and they are spotting uh, to, to search for the uh, whale sharks from the surface. And once they find them, we uh, head over there with our tenders and we jump in. And we were actually lucky. We got to see two juvenile whale sharks. They were not hanging around for very long because these they get spooked very, very easily. But then at the other dive site, which is just on the southern tip of uh, Bohol, it's called Pamilakan and Lila. Uh, that's where you have some local fishermen, they're cleaning their, their catch, and that attracts uh, the, uh, the whale sharks. And we had five of them just circling around us, playing with our bubbles. I mean, we were five, ten feet away. It was absolutely spectacular. So really, really cool. Wow. So here is basically the gang. We were arriving, um, or we were picked up at the hotel. And uh, the yacht, as you can see on the right-hand side, is waiting for us where the captain greets us and all our members of our charter and uh, you see the captain there on the lower left corner and then you have the cruise director and a brand new videographer her name is brenda she was excellent excellent uh, and then obviously the crew presents themselves introduces themselves uh, and they will give us a, a welcome briefing we got a nice glass of champagne when we boarded and uh, everybody was in really really good spirits and we were eager to, eager to uh, get our dives started. But before we get there, this is um, some images from inside of the Philippines aggressor. If you look on the top left-hand side, that's the dining area. It's a huge, huge area. Easily can fit uh, uh, the maximum capacity of what the Philippines aggressor can take. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see uh, uh, the, one of the big television screens that they're giving their briefings on. Uh, and uh, if you go up one level, then you actually have a lounge. And basically, the left-hand side is the, where you see the staircase leading down to the restaurant part of the yacht. And then on the right-hand side, you see the other part of that lounge. And this is a good place to hang out in the evening after your night dive, if you want to check out a movie or whatnot, because they do have a pretty extensive uh, library of, of uh, movies. Uh, just outside of this lounge, you have an outdoor area where you can sit and chill out. Uh, it wasn't really used that much because there is another deck, one level up, which is the uh, 
sun deck. And as you can see, very, very spacious. You got two large tables with seatings for all our guests. There's a big bar area uh, where they keep sodas, beer, juices, and water. There are water stations all over the boat. So you do not, uh, you do not, um, what am I gonna say? Uh, you do not wanna uh, get dehydrated. So they're placed all over the boat. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the favorite places where people were hanging out in between dives. And as I said, we had fantastic weather throughout the entire 10 day charter. And also, as you can see, there is a, uh, a hot tub, a jacuzzi right there in the middle that I believe there was only two guests that decided to use it uh, just to make sure that it worked and it did work. It's a great, great hot tub. Awesome. So we have uh, several different types of cabins on the Philippines aggressor. And um, what you see on the upper left-hand corner, we have three of those balcony suites and uh, it's uh, very, very large, very roomy. Uh, and obviously you have your private bathroom or head and shower. And on the Philippines aggressor, they're separated. So you have the shower in a separate shower stall. And then you see that the toilet is at the other end of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, the balcony suites, obviously, as the name suggests, it has a pretty roomy or large balcony where you also have a round table and two chairs. So you can sit out and enjoy the uh, sunset uh, after dinner, if that is what you like to do. Then on the lower left corner, that's where you see my stateroom that I had. And uh, that was on the main deck, both the balcony suites and these staterooms um, with the two single beds that actually can be moved and made into a king or on the main deck. So you have large square windows. As a matter of fact, there's two windows in the actual stateroom, and then there is one in the bathroom. So plenty of sunlight, plenty of uh, beautiful views when you're cruising among all these islands. And then you, on the right-hand side, you see the gift that we're getting on the boat. It was a uh, kind of a water bottle. You can also use this for, uh, for tea or coffee or whatever. Nice. Here you come down to the lower uh, deck. And uh, one thing that uh, impressed me a lot was these portholes. They were probably about at least two or three times larger than regular portholes on our yachts. Hmm. So that was kind of interesting. And as you can see, there's a queen bed and then a single bed, depending on what type of uh, guest you have. If there's a couple, they probably use the queen. If not, they can use the single as well. And the same thing, the bathrooms, excellent. Hot water worked fine. There's shampoo and conditioner and soap uh, on the wall. Um, so roomy, 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 very roomy, I can say. Okay, good. Now, food is really something that is important when you're on the ocean. Um, you do not have to go hungry when you're traveling with a Philippines aggressor. Lunch is usually served uh, as a buffet style. Uh, the same thing with breakfast in the morning. You have hot and cold breakfast. What we did, we had our continental breakfast before our first morning dive that usually happened about six o'clock in the morning. And uh, when we came back from the first dive, we had... Uh, um, our hot breakfast. And that was usually uh, eggs to order. Sometimes it was bacon, sometimes it was pan pancakes. So every morning there's a little bit different. And then obviously the other images show some of the quality of the food that we experienced and our two excellent chefs that uh, really worked hard to make everybody happy on the boat. Uh, the diving and the dive deck. Uh, on the upper left-hand side, you see the camera table. Uh, and uh, one of our very, very good friends, Jay, that is a professional photographer. He got some great shots during this week. Um, and uh, you have the setup with all the scuba tanks on each side of the camera table. And once you have set up your gear the very first day, you really don't touch it until the end of the week because what the crew do does, they actually change the tanks after each and every dive. So when you come out, your BC and setup is already put on your tank and it's full and ready to go. Uh, there are lockers for, for our guests if they would like to char you know, charge batteries or store stuff that needs to stay dry. So everybody has their own little locker. There's, as you can see, electrical outlets in them as well. And uh, after each and every dive, you are welcome to take your own um, warm towel for the week. Uh, everybody have their own designated uh, deck towel, which are obviously only to be used uh, outside, inside you have your own uh, indoor towels. 
And then one of the more impressive things was that they actually had four hot water showers on the back deck. And as you can see, it's a huge dive deck, uh, but none of the diving is done from the actual mothership. Uh, all the diving is done from those two large tenders and they have very, very sturdy uh, ladders to get back up on the boat. But the good thing is that you do not have to walk up the ladders with your tank on your back. Basically, you take it off in the water and the crew will hoist it up for you. So the only thing that you're going to carry is your own body weight when you get up on the boat. Perfect. So the lady up in the low, uh, upper left corner, uh, she was always ready after dive with either a hot cup of cocoa or some fresh squeezed uh, juice of some sort, always with a smile. Uh, and then the guys, they took care of all the camera gear. They even took my, uh, I didn't even need a wetsuit because it was like 85 degree water. Uh, but they took that, rinsed it off, were hanging it up and you didn't have to bother about anything. They were really, really great. And always with a smile on their faces. And as you can see with the, on the images with some of our guests, they were extremely, extremely happy uh, throughout the week. I mean absolutely wonderful experience and uh, some of the uh, images that we uh, and tom real quick uh yeah. if you could go back on that last slide one thing that was impressive that you told me or i think it's important at least to say is how short all the tender rides were yeah i think the longest one was not more than yeah four or five minutes at the most yeah. uh, many many times the mothership they do not have anchorage so basically they have their engines running and they're basically just sitting still in the water and we get into the tenders and we drive two, three, four, maybe five minutes at the most. And that's basically it. And somebody asked me uh, last week if there's a lot of uh, current, strong currents. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when we were there, we had very little current. Uh, there was uh, a, a few dives when we uh, looked for the thresher sharks <clears throat> where one of the dive masters jumps in checks the current and said, no, it's not that bad. Uh, and basically we just jump in, go down to 60, 70 feet, and then basically lay, lie down on the sand. So, um, and uh, the dive master said that usually if they have a current that is too strong, they will do another dive site and come back to the one that had the current, maybe later in the day or maybe one of the other days. So you're never really gonna struggle swimming against the current, not at all. And do you stay with the same group that's on the dive tender with you? We did. We did this week, but uh, obviously uh, people can change. But what they do in the beginning of the week, they uh, assign you to one of the groups. And uh, usually it also, they ask you how experienced you are. Maybe you have somebody that is a little bit less experienced. Uh, obviously, then they put them in sort of like separate. But generally, uh, and especially the, on my trip, uh, everybody was extremely experienced. And we, we didn't want to change up the groups or anything. We were very happy with how it was split up. Okay, good. So again, here are a little bit of what we saw during the week. Uh, it's amazing, amazing biodiversity uh, in the Philippines. Everything from the most incredible small critters, like you can see the little seahorse, pygmy seahorse, which is not bigger than, I would say, about 10 millimeters. Uh, <laughs> we saw three different kinds. Uh, and then obviously the, the the big animals, which is the whale shark, where we um, uh, we got to see them in two different places. And then uh, Malapascua, which is famous for for the thresher sharks. And um, then we actually came to an island. I can't remember exactly the name of it, but it was just south of um, of uh, Bohol. And there were literally, I think I exaggerated the other day when I spoke to you, Cole, and there was a hundred turtles. Uh -huh. There was at least 30, 40, maybe even 50 turtles, giant wow. green turtles. Some of them were just sleeping on the sand and you came up to them and you looked at them really close, maybe took a picture and they just blinked their light little eyes. And then after maybe a minute or two, they got a little bit, oh, okay, now you got your picture, so I'm heading out. Yeah. And then he slowly, slowly just started to move away. But they were just everywhere. Just amazing. I never seen something like that. That that would be a dive. I yeah, mean, no, every, was... every, everybody that said that says you know when they see the whale shark that's like their favorite dive. But I feel like if I was on a dive right now, which I uh, take it you know I've never been with a whale shark yet, but if I had forty turtles on one dive site, I don't think that's something I'll ever forget. 
you will on this place. It's a, it's a turtle sanctuary. So uh, they are not afraid of humans. They're not afraid of snorkelers or divers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, I mean, they were just everywhere. And how many dives did you do at this island? Uh, we did two. We did two on that uh, dive because there's sort of like two sections of the dive site. So you had a slight, slight current on the first dive. So we started over here and just flowed with the current over here. And then we came up. And then a couple of hours later, when we're doing the second dive, the current has switched. So we went over here and went down and then just drifted with the current the other direction. So it's basically two dive sites in one. So okay. you weren't really diving the actual same dive site. It's sort of like split up in two, so to speak. Okay. Uh, frogfish everywhere. We had yellow, we had orange, we had black frogfish. And the black frogfish that we saw, they were easily a foot long. They were huge. Wow. Uh, and then obviously certain areas, beautiful, beautiful co soft coral, hard color, coral, uh, table coral, uh, basically anything you can imagine in any type of color, absolutely spectacular. And what about the fish life? Uh, it's great. It's absolutely great. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the last island we visited, they had, we encountered a huge, it must have been probably, I don't know, three, four, five thousand 5,000 jacks in one school. And we, we were sort of like floating or, or going with the uh, current uh, at about, 70 80 feet and then i'm looking out in the big blue and it looks like a big shadow and i'm looking what the heck is that and then it got closer and closer and it turned out to be this giant humongous school of jacks wow and one of our professional photographers that were on board he actually shot straight out into into the big blue ended up in the middle of this enormous school and he got some incredible pictures from it Wow. Uh, which uh, yeah it's it's it was just amazing absolutely amazing so all in all this is the boat the thailand uh, the uh, philippines aggressor and basically what you're doing when you're heading over there is you eat you sleep and you die <laughs> strongly recommended and so we'll that is pretty much uh, all i have to tell and i hope that makes everybody excited to head over to the visayas Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if you pick uh, a 10 day charter, you are either going to go up towards Malapascua and um, Gato Island, or if you're choosing, they have another 10 day trip that takes you down to. I have to look at the website for the name of this dive site, but that is where you have a good chance to see the blue ring octopus because that is nothing, that is not something that you will see on the route that I did. They're furthermore south. Okay. Yeah, so great things to see on both sides. It sounds like your route more likely thresher sharks, right? Are they going to see thresher sharks on that route as well? Uh, no, because the threshers are, I would say, almost resident up in that area of Malapasco. Okay, are are those threshers shy at all? Because I feel like that's always been the um, the they're very shy. We're doing the same. If you have been, I don't know if you've been to Cocos, but for the folks that have been to Cocos Island. You know that you're going down to the rocks, you hide behind the rocks, not because you're scared of the hammerheads, but if when, when the hammerheads are around and they come really up close towards the, the rocks, if you are then taking your camera, you start to swim towards the hammerheads, they will just head out in the big blue and they will not be back for the rest of the dive. And the same thing here, as I mentioned, you're lying down on the sand at 70 feet for 10, 15 minutes, and you just wait there. And, and the, they will come closer and closer but if you are one of those that don't understand, you know, how to do this and you start swimming out towards them to get a better shot, they will just go away and you will not see them for the rest of the dive. Wow. Yeah. And I read something that the thresher shark's tail is half the length of their body. So that's yeah, great. And, they use, and you know that. what they're using it for, right? They slap and smack the, uh, their prey and stun them so they yeah. can, isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. That's why you want to stay far away from them. Yeah, I bet. Uh, tell us real quick about the visibility. Uh, visibility was actually pretty good in most places. Uh, I would say uh, we had between 60 and 80 feet. Uh, the, where the turtles were was probably the best visibility, and it was uh, upwards 100, maybe even a little bit more. But in general, 60 to 80 feet. Did you see any mantas on this trip? No, I did not, as okay. a matter of fact. 
Uh, and I do not recall that we mentioned it or if the dive masters mentioned it, but you know, once we had the thresher sharks, the whale sharks, the turtles, the frogfish, the seahorses, you know, um, you can't expect to get everything on the planet in one right. place. Right, right. Can't can't give you everything. All right, well, that sounds good. And how many different dives would you say that you were on that you saw the whale sharks? Uh, two. The two. first one was sort of like the wild one, mm -hmm. where we have uh, local spotters in their kayaks yeah. with their outriggers. Yeah. And then the second one was uh, where the fishermen are cleaning their stuff, and the whale sharks are hanging and uh, hanging around days on end. You, you can basically dive uh, hours on end, but it is limited to 45 minutes because we did have to take a, we had to get ashore actually and get a briefing because they're very protected uh in that area so you know they they really have some regulations that we need to follow were there any shore excursions you guys did uh we did one very short one and it was not really i would say a shore excursion but on each and every island which is autonomous kind of uh we have to pay the park fee uh on each and every island they visit. So okay. at one point uh, we were at one island uh, and um, the cruise director asked us if we wanted to join uh, and get ashore to see an old Spanish fort uh, from the, uh, I think it was the 16th or the 15th century. Wow. So we stepped ashore, uh, we walked into a little day, somebody was constructing a little bed and breakfast there. We checked in how that looked like and then we visited this little fort and there was also a very a uh, nice little church uh, right next to it. But we spent maybe half an hour there. It was extremely hot. And I know some of our uh, guests, they want to get back to the boat because it was extremely, extremely hot. Okay, gotcha. Okay, well, it sounds like it's the trip to do. It's I know it's moved up my bucket list for sure. So I appreciate you coming on and, and letting our customers know a little bit about your your, uh, your experience. Anytime anybody asks any questions, they uh, know where to find me. All right. Sounds good. Well, thanks, guys. I hope to see you soon and hopefully seeing you on the Philippines aggressor. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the Inspired by Adventure podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you haven't already, please subscribe through iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. See you next time.